I'm Stephen Ben Danoon. You are watching Israeli News Live. We have very serious breaking news, and I want to thank Sister Kathy Lynn from our Facebook page there that has shared a news clip with us this morning from naturalnews.com, uh, an article written by Mike Adams that says, Russia throws down the gauntlet energy supply to Europe, cut off petrodollar abandoned as currency war escalates. Um, and he uh, goes on to say here, yesterday Russia cut off natural gas supply to Europe, plunging the continent into an energy crisis within hours as a dispute with Ukraine escalated, report, reports the Daily Mail. Uh, the EU sanctions on Russia not likely to be, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Now, before I go into further news there, let me just say that we took the time to co corroborate this particular story. I'm going to go back to Mike Adams' story in Natural News in just a moment. Uh, but we did take and check through Russian news agencies as well to see if this has actually happened. And German, and we have been able to confirm that, yes, it is a fact. This has happened. Russia has cut the supply of gas to Europe. Most of that is Eastern Europe that is affected, the former Soviet states, and it could be a move in order to help bring back their support for the Soviet Union. Uh, let me share with you some other articles, though, that kind of corroborate this, and then I'll go back to Mike Adams' report there. On uh, TASS.com, which is a Russian news agency, it says the EU sanctions on Russia uh, not likely to be lifted in spring, says the Chancellor uh, of Germany, uh, Ms. Merkel there. Uh, stated here that uh, German Chancellor Angela Merkel said she believes it is unnecessary to lift the West sanctions on Russia due to Russia's economic situation. Moreover, moreover the EU restrict measures imposed because of the situation around Crimea are unlikely to be canceled in spring. She said in an interview to the Frankfurt uh, al, al Min Zutang uh, newspaper published on Friday, that was yesterday, the annexation of Crimea, which is, uh, she goes on to state this, the annexation of Crimea, which is a blatant violation of the principles of international law and the events in eastern Ukraine are serious violation of G7 values, she's implying. She said to the European Union, sanctions are valid for one year. In spring, we will discuss the question on how to deal with the sanctions that we decided to impose after Russia's annexation of Crimea. Uh, she says also, given the current situation, they will remain in place. The chancellor in, uh, evaded answering the question whether the West restrictive measures have been effective. This morning, gas companies in Ukraine said that Russia had completely cut off their supply. Six countries reported a complete shutoff of Russian gas shipped via Ukraine today in a sharp escalation of struggle over energy that threatens as winter sets in. Now, that was from TASS news agency confirming, which is a Russian news agency, confirming that the gas was actually cut off. Uh, another article that they put out that I think is important for you to be aware of, one of the reasons why this is all escalating. Ukraine troops were given a possibility to safely withdraw from the Don Donetsk uh, airport within 24 hours. Uh, Valentin Matsuzinko, a military advisor to the, to the head of the self-proclaimed Donetsk People's Republic, told TASS on Friday. The Ukrainian forces were there at the airport. Uh, he went on to say that the combat operation unleashed at the Donetsk airport a day after had been provoked by the Ukrainian side. A mine from their territory hit a DPR munitions depot. Servicemen were killed. This incident triggered the operation, he noted. Uh, and he goes on, it goes on to say that on Wednesday, uh, January 14th, Dennis Pushlin, DPR's uh, representative in the contact group for the peace settlement in Ukraine said uh, DPR self-defense forces had opened up a corridor to the Ukraine military, uh, Ukraine's military to withdraw from the Donetsk airport. Pushlin stressed that this was done to avoid casualties. It was not an operation to squeeze out the Ukrainian troops from the airport. It was a goodwill gesture on the part of the DPR, he said. We are doing our best to save the lives of the Ukrainian mil military, for we want no casualties even on their part. So it's very obvious that the war in eastern Ukraine is about to intensify. And it may bring Russia in on the front because Russia can only allow so long for this to, to escalate before they will end up getting involved in this war. Uh, because for them, it is a strategic region. It is a strategic nation. 
uh, especially since Crimea, who did a uh, national referendum that voted to become part of the Soviet Union, according to what the news agencies have reported on that out of Russia, that they would then be landlocked, separating Ukraine and Crimea uh, would be no longer a, a direct access to Russia. So therefore, Russia is going to make sure that Ukraine stays a part of the Russian province. Um, also, Russia, uh, excuse me, not Russia, but Reuters News uh, brought out an article that said Russia could soon threaten three Ukraines uh, at once, uh, U.S. general warns. Now, when he says Ukraines, he's talking about three different fronts they would be able to fight at one time. Uh, he doesn't believe that was Lieutenant General uh, Ben Hodges, the commander of the U.S. Army in Europe. He said on, an, on an another neighbor, uh, excuse me, said an attack on another neighbor does not seem like an immediate threat because Moscow appears to have its hands full with Ukraine right now. But he does go on to say that Russia has been making preparations to make that change. And he believes uh, within a few years that Russia will have the ability to strike three major fronts at one time. Uh, at this point, he doesn't believe that that will take place. But who knows what Russia's capabilities are? It is very obvious, though, that Russia is planning for a, an all-out war in the coming years, if not months away. Um, uh, going back to Mike Adams' report, though, on naturalnews.com, uh, it says Alter alternative media warned about this weeks ago, the, the events that are unfolding about the cutting of the natural gas. He said former U.S. Tre uh, Treasury Secretary Paul Craig Roberts it also warned in advance of, black swan, of a black swan event, such as Russia cutting off energy supplies to European nations as a prelude to war. Europe depends heavily on natural gas supplies from Russia, which are piped into the region via Ukraine. This is especially true in the winter when gas is needed for heat. In addition to cutting off natural gas supplies to Europe, Russia has also just pulled itself out of the petrodollar. Um, that was reported on Zero, Zero Hedge. The story quotes Bloomberg.com stating that Russia may unseal its $88 billion reserve fund and convert some of its foreign currency holdings into ruble. Uh, into the ru uh, ruble. This is further explained by Mark Slavo at shtfcplan.com, who explains what we are seeing are the strategic moves that will eventually catalyze the next great war. And make no mistake, this is exactly what's in store for the world should these escalations continue. Um, it goes on to say, uh, he goes on to write, Mike Adams writes, an escalation into war. What, what's happening here is a radical escalation of the global currency war in which Russia and China are attempting to rout the U.S. dollar and ultimately destroy the U.S. empire. Very much like the U.S. right now with their sanctions and the e European Union are trying to collapse the Russian ruble. In fact, what's interesting, they're trying to collapse it ahead of the dollar falling. So it, it, it's a very interesting war, and you can't help how much the Vatican hand is behind this because the Vatican wants to control a one-world currency and a one-world monetary system. But clearly, in a biblical prophecy, he gets nervous about things, uh, tidings from the north and from the east. What are the tidings from the east? China has been buying up the gold of the world, making sure that their, their currency is backed by gold not just empty air, as Mike Adam brings out in his own article. Uh, that's, in fact, that's what we're reading next. This is, explains why China has been buying up the world's physical gold supplies. The U.S., meanwhile, has empty gold vaults and a flat paper currency backed by nothing but hot air, empty promises, and endless debt. The whole world knows this, and nations like Russia are posi positioning themselves to take advantage of the massive currency collapse that eventually is coming to the dollar. Very interesting. You know, as years ago, I actually made a statement watching how that America, the American economy was happening as a young man. I saw that young people would always rack up a lot of debt only to find they couldn't pay the debt back and eventually would have to file bankruptcy. And as a young man, I realized that this is exactly what America is doing. And I made the statement then, America is like the young people of this world. They're racking up a lot of debt and getting to a place where they can't pay it back. Eventually, the U.S. would have to declare bankruptcy. And who will bail them out then? The Vatican will. So even when the U.S. dollar does fall, 
It'll be a temporary thing, but of course you will have martial law, you'll have rioting, and a whole lot of other things. The general expects that this may be years to come, and so does Mike Adams. He also d declares that it may be a few years away, but it will come unexpectedly. So it is a good time to plan, no doubt. And as well, remember us here at Israeli News Live and also Danun Institute of Biblical Research. Because without your help, while you're also preparing yourself, we wouldn't be able to prepare with you. It's your contributions that makes it possible. I'm Stephen Ben Danun with Israeli News Live. Shalom and good day.